Well, here it is, Masonic Lodge number 666. Uh, this lodge is located in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And uh, I had heard about this thing, and uh, we decided to go and check it out. Uh, it's very interesting that you can see here on the back of the building, all the windows are closed in. You can't see through any of those windows. Kind of strange. You say, well, that's just maybe the one side. No, actually, on the other side, too, it's the same thing. Again, you can see the windows are closed in. Kind of like they're trying to keep people from looking in and seeing what's going on. And of course on the front there, you can also see that the windows are closed and there you can see more detail, the lodge number 666. And then on the other side, there weren't any windows, but you see this big emblem here of the Masonic um, square and compass with the G and the F and the AM there at the bottom stands for Free and Accepted Masons and you see their number 666 and very interesting is the fact that this lodge, this particular lodge is located along highway uh, route number 322 what's the significance there? Well you have Skull and Bones, the secret society at Yale University and that's their number 322 and there you have a picture, of course, of one of the classes, and the man in the gray suit right beside the grandfather clock is George H.W. Bush, George Bush Sr., in other words. Now we're going to look at Masonic obelisks in Lancaster County graveyards. And of course, pretty much anywhere you live in America, you're going to see these obelisks in graveyards. And here's one that we see, and this one is obviously a Masonic. Uh, this guy was a Mason, and this is pretty old here uh, born in 1780 and died in 1864 so but it's very interesting I don't think that, that that obelisk was standing there that whole time I don't think that obelisk has been there has been there since 17 or sorry 1864 here's another one this is up in a um, town called Newman's town another obelisk George Long again another old one that goes way back now here's another one of the members of the Long family. They have these extremely elaborate uh, gravestones. Very interesting. Another Long of the Long family here. Not exactly sure of the uh, Masonic occult significance of the statue there. Uh, but you can see here on the book, you have a cross and then the Greek symbols for Alpha and Omega. Interesting. But in that same graveyard, you have this little short obelisk here. And this one has, looks like IMC or IMG, I'm, I'm not sure what that, how those letters are. And you have this next one here, I thought this was kind of an interesting uh, little grave area here. NP Cauldron. And I saw this one here too, and I thought, oh boy. There you have the IHS in the, the center of that thing. And that does not stand for in hoc signo or something like this. It stands for Isis Horus Zeb, used by Catholics a lot of times. Now this one here, I don't know. Is this an obelisk? I, I'm not sure. I thought the X's were kind of interesting there at the bottom. Um, but I'm not really sure if you would classify that as an obelisk. It doesn't have the traditional obelisk shape, as does this one. This is another graveyard of another uh, phallus house. Another obelisk there with a cross and some other decorations on it and this one again it's the long column of an obelisk but it has a different top on it and of course you can see the big phallus house there another uh, tall very tall obelisk with the masonic symbol on it here's a shorter obelisk in that same graveyard this is up near Myerstown, Pennsylvania. Another obelisk there with the wreath uh, decoration on it. Now again, I didn't. I took a picture of this. I thought I'd include it. I don't know if this is an obelisk or it's kind of a stylized type of a thing, a, a column. No Masonic symbols on it or anything, but uh, I just thought it was interesting. There and that one and another one here. Uh, interesting. Another obelisk, definitely, clearly an obelisk here. And of course, remember, uh, if you're not really understanding why this video is being made, all of these obelisks here are basically um, 
the symbol of Baal worship, the slain and risen god of the ancient Babylonian witchcraft system, the male phallic symbol, uh, an uncircumcised male phallus. You can figure that one out. But it uh, just goes to show you that times really haven't changed that much. Uh, we still have paganism rampant. And of course you can see there, as I did in my IFBC studies, you can see the shape of the Greek Parthenon. Again, another column-shaped type of a thing there. I don't know, is that an obelisk or not? I have no idea. This one definitely is, though. These obelisks are everywhere, all across the country. My travels all around the country, I've, I've seen these obelisks in graveyard after graveyard. Another old part of the cemetery here, an old barn there, kind of falling down, but you see an obelisk there to the right. This one actually was in a Catholic uh, graveyard. And again, you see the IHS on the side of the thing there. I thought this was interesting in memory of Father Strickland and the IHS cross there. If he was a real Catholic priest there, the Father Strickland, then he, I can tell you he's burning in hell right now. Uh, again, kind of a column shape here, not quite the same as a traditional obelisk, but um, it looks somewhat like an obelisk, I think. And of course, you know, the St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, there are obelisks. The, one of the biggest and oldest obelisks in the world is there. But uh, guarding the entryway to this graveyard for these Catholics, you have these winged devils, these women with uh, the wings of a stork that's mentioned in the Bible. Now this next one's very interesting. Here's the cornerstone on an old Baptist church building, an old Baptist phallus house. It was abandoned for a while, now these people are fixing it up. I couldn't uh, move the uh, rose bushes out of the way there. I didn't want to do that, so I just took the picture as best I could. But you see there, M-W-P-H-G-L-F-A-M of P-A, and then H-S banner. And I thought, what does this mean? Looked it up, right there you have it. Most Worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge Free and Accepted Masons Jurisdiction of Pennsylvania. And whenever you see Prince Hall, it means that they were um, Hamitic. They were uh, African American, would be the modern term for it. But what does this uh, HS banner stand for? I kind of thought, what's an HS banner? Well, here you go. 1976. You can see there the this place was built on October 24th, 1976. And there you have the, the worshipful master of this lodge here in Pennsylvania, H. Harold S. Banner. That's what you have there. Next, we're going to go to the Ephrata Cloister. Here you can see the sign there about the Seventh-day Baptist community founded by Conrad Beisel. Our original buildings erected between 1735 and 1749. So this is a very old commune. And uh, according to Bill Schneblin, he said it was one of the first Rosicrucian colonies. It was a New Age colony. Ben Franklin would come there because Ben Franklin was a New Ager. Beisel divided his followers into two celibate orders. Isn't that interesting? If you know anything about the Catholic thing there. But it, look at it, what it says here. At effort of members prepared for Christ's return to earth, many em members embraced mysticism. An intensely, intensely personal uni union with God through concentrated prayer, worship, and work. Or they're trying to work their way to heaven, but they were into the new age kind of concepts of mysticism. Here's a pillow. <laughs> uh, get a good night of sleep on that, I guess. Yeah. There talked about uh, just different things there. Oh, and then the celibate members adopted a standard for standard form of dress patterned after the habits of Roman Catholic monks. So again, you have all these different Protestant type groups that are offshoots of Roman Catholicism. That's all they are. You say, well, they were Baptists. Yeah, Catholic. Next, we have a picture here. One of the people drew this of what they believed New Jerusalem was going to look like. Very interesting. And there you have a whole bunch of pyramids, you know, these triangular shapes. And they almost look like all-seeing eyes. Drawn in the early 1700s. Hmm, interesting. There you have a, an original copy of Martyr's Mirror. They actually would reprint that and they translate it into English there at uh, Everett Cloister. Um, I've used some of those original uh, drawings, those original woodcuts in some of my videos. So it's pretty neat to see an original copy of one. There you 
you have again the martyr's mirror, the outside, what it looked like on the outside. Here you have a some things in very stylized German and what does it translate to? Well, right here. Uh, Go forth, beloved soul, and nobly bear vexation. Thy fortune blossoms there in that eternity. There shalt thou find thy way into the, thy peaceful sanctum. But first must come both strain and harsh infirmity. And am I at this time full well strained and sorely burdened, so that the agony goes deep into my breast? Yet comes the time when hope my suffering will have mirth Mirthened, when I go for much pain into my sanctum's rest. In other words, they're working their way to heaven, just like any monk, any nun. Uh, it's a satanic concept where you have to suffer on your own, kind of like a lot of these people today that are saying that uh, the bride of Christ has to be has to go through suffering of the time of great tribulation before they can enter into the marriage supper. It's nonsense. Here again, you have another one of these very elaborate um, drawings. There things and, and you can pause it and read that one it's it's more uh, works is all they were doing there and there it talks about how they had a mostly vegetarian diet oh boy commanding to abstain from meats you know now they did say that they allowed meat eating down in there but you know kind of weird and here's just a few pictures of some of the buildings at Ephrata Cloister if you've never been there I imagine most people watching this video probably haven't but uh, a lot of just neat old buildings and there it talks about the German Seventh-day Baptist Church uh, how that the celibate members all died you know they died out that kind of can happen <laughs> that's a problem and here up on top of the cloister you have this gigantic big obelisk and here we are at the base of it I'm just gonna kind of pan up a little bit here this thing was uh, erected for uh, soldiers that died in the Revolutionary War. And the fact that uh, the members of the um, cloister there actually took care of them and tried to bring them back to health. But around this obelisk, you also have graves. Look at this grave. Interesting. And here you have, it says, erected under the auspices of the Ephrata Monument Association, which was duly chartered by the legislature of the state of Pennsylvania, unveiled and dedicated May 1st, 1902. May 1st is a high satanic holiday known as Beltane. So, and it's a May Day, the May Pole uh, phallic ceremony. So it's interesting that they would have erected it on May 1st. Here you have inside one of the buildings at the cloister there, kind of a little wood shop area. You can see a shaving horse there and some old augers and things that would be used to drill holes and hewing axes and, and such. Um, there's a printing press. I apologize for the glare on some of these pictures. But you can see the old printing press where they would make the martyr's mirror. There you have a, this contraption with the things hanging down. It would be used to make multiple candles at the same time. Uh, there you have an old water well. You crank it up and then you, know, you get your water. Type area. I guess that might have been where they would take care of some of the sick. And there you have uh, some sewing areas. I thought that was kind of an interesting little machine there. Uh, they would make some kind of um, woven type of a little decorative cord or something, I guess. Again, some of these things, maybe some of you viewers out there, you'll understand what this is. I don't really know what that thing does. But you have there the spinning wheel, I guess, there in the, in the loom up here. And uh, there you have the graveyard at the Ephrata Cloister. And I thought this next, in, this next uh, gravestone was pretty interesting. Kind of an interesting handshake they're doing there, isn't it? Well, if you know anything about the Masonic Lodge, you'll understand that that's a Masonic handshake. There's the Ephrata Academy, Seventh-day Baptist, that they had a school for children. Interesting. Can apologize for the glare with my hand there. But you can see there the, the old, what the old school would have looked like. Now this next picture is very interesting too. This was on the back of an old um, picture that my grandfather had uh, 
His name was Milton Denlinger. And this is Nickel Mines Mennonite Church in 1936. Oh, look what we have there in the graveyard. An obelisk. Interesting. Way back in 1936, you have the Mennonites erecting an obelisk in their graveyard. And here, in our travels up to New England, up through New England, we saw this big monument thing in Vermont. thought that was kind of interesting, and it's a very, very large one. Um, then we saw this big, huge phallus house here, and it had some interesting designs on the front windows. Ah, look there. Some trichatrus. Two of them, actually, to be precise. And then, in the town of up in Maine, there you have this big Masonic... Uh, monument to George Washington. Again, another big phallus house with more obelisks out in the graveyard. And that's you know, a lot of what you're going to see across the country. Uh, we really haven't departed much from the paganism that existed back in the Bible times. But uh, to close it off here, I want to show one more phallus house here We're across the road. Nice big phallus house there. And uh, look at the name of the thing, Unity Church. And you say, well, who would pastor a thing like that? Well, Pastor Julie, Julie A. Vance. And it's you can't see the sign there, but it says Positive Practical Christianity. You know, you got to have that, right? 